from police in a case like Michael Brown. And right now, thousands of Americans are marching in New York and Washington and across the country demanding a justice system that applies the same to everybody and honors our values. And you, uh, we want you to know that our hearts are out there marching with them. <laughs> Remember that oldie but goodie? All right, folks, so welcome to the Steve Molesberg Show. It is the Monday edition, and uh, Mary Catherine Hamm joins us in just one second to talk about that in her great new book. I just want to point out, Jeb Bush announces he's running for president. Tomorrow, it looks like Donald Trump will announce he's running for president, and uh, the hits just keep on coming. We'll talk about all that during the course of the show, and maybe with Mary. Mary Catherine Hamm is with us, co-author of End of Discussion, How the Left's Outrage uh, industry, outrage industry, shuts down debate, manipulates voters, and makes America less free. Also, of course, a reader at uh, Hot Air and also a uh, watcher on Fox News. Welcome. Great hey, to see you. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, the book is so important because, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, of all people, mm -hmm. is now coming out and saying, wait, wait, we're too politically correct. Well, uh, didn't he and his liberal cohorts get us to where we are? Well, I do think there are two segments of liberals. Maybe perhaps the more friendly to free speech are a little older, and there's a younger generation that's saying, no, we don't want to be offended by oh, anything. Oh, they're totally intolerant. So I yeah. think it's important that liberals in good standing come out and push back against these end of discussion tactics. And that's what many of these comedians are doing. Jay Leno has said it, Jerry Seinfeld, and Chris Rock even doesn't, uh, yeah. does not perform on college campuses. Right. And here's what I think. He warned Seinfeld about college right. campuses. Here, here's where we found hope in writing into discussion, because it can be a little scary what's going on, is that Americans don't like ha having fun taken away from them. So even college students who are really steeped in this and very liberal sometimes can look around and go, I'm paying a fortune to go here, and I used to get Chris Rock and Jerry Seinfeld, <laughs> and now I don't get that anymore. So I'm hoping that that's part of the correction here. Well, you know, I was watching some of the reaction on MSNBC to this, and I can't tell you who they were, but they had a bunch of uh, young progressives or whatever talking about, oh, Jerry Seinfeld, well, maybe he should write new jokes. Oh, he's old. He's, he's a billionaire. I don't care about him. Why doesn't he shut up? I mean, they're attacking him, and these are the younger, less tolerant liberals that you're talking about. Well, and this is the perfect example of ending the discussion by yes. saying, uh, excuse me, aren't you a white man? Yeah. I think oh, we've heard that's enough That's the one thing you. they left out. They didn't call him white, which I right. alluded to when I played those remarks. Guy, right? yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. He doesn't he has pr the protection of wealth and fame, right? Yes. There's plenty of other comics coming up they who are don't. scared to talk mm -hmm. on campus because they will lose their career and they have nothing to fall back on. Yep. So he's speaking out for a lot of other people who don't have the same privilege as he has. And of course, end of discussion, uh, the science has decided right. uh, that gl climate change is real, global warming is real, man-made blah blah is real, end of discussion, 99% of the scientists say so, to the point where the CNN said, we shouldn't be putting people on who have the other point of view. That's really end of discussion. Right. When it comes to science, we point out a couple times in end of discussion how our friends on the left are not as pro-science as they might like us to think. Um, and that's certainly one example. I think food uh, police is another oh, yeah. one where they get food and health and nutrition wrong every three years and then they change their minds and act like they never said the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all about sort of hysteria and emotion and it's not about examining facts and that's not how you have a discussion. Well you talk about the college kids saying wait a minute I'm paying all this money I want to have fun. Right. Uh, but politically speaking and, and otherwise is it going to backfire? I mean, is it going to come full cycle uh, to the point where the Seinfelds are going to come out and they're going to be younger, not only in comedy, but in life and politics and every realm and say, wait a minute, this isn't right? Well, I do think we're reaching a point where people like Seinfeld, Bill Maher just came out today and spoke about this, realize that we don't want this to be the end of discussion. Look, if if you can't offend anybody, that is not compatible with free speech. So I do think there's some rays of hope here. There's another path, though, and this is what we talk about in the discussion. It's not just the left that does this. The right does it, sometimes to each other, sometimes to the left. Uh, and I think an outrage war, an arms race, is not going to get us anywhere productive either. So we need to watch out for that, and some, that's something we advise. How does the, the right book. do it? Well, a, a perfect example, I think, sometimes is, although I have complaints about media coverage of the police uh, incidents that mm -hmm. we've seen all over the country, certainly the hands up, don't shoot, which ended up not comporting with right. the facts. I think too often on the right, there is a fight between the libertarian side and the law and order side that says, well, why do you hate cops? Well, why do you hate African Americans? And it's right, like, right. that's not a dis that's not a debate. And right. we do it to each other too. Yeah, no, that's a good point. All right, yeah, there's a lot going on in the news. First of all, what do you think of Jeb Bush uh, getting in? Well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I asked that. <laughs> Look, I think that there are many things on paper to commend Jeb Bush. I think 
nonetheless, he will have a very, very, very tough time convincing conservatives in the primary that he's the guy, and then convincing general election voters, because it's not just about the legacy of his brother, which I think some of those questions could be seen as unfair. Mm -hmm, absolutely. It is about whether Americans are into dynastic uh, <laughs> politics. <laughs> yeah. Now, Clinton won't get the same questions because they're going to be more friendly to her, right. but I think I have not seen from them a true grasp on his team of how hostile the media might be to them on this front, and they need to figure that out. All right. Let, actually, let's, let's skip to Hillary here, um, if we can. This is uh, 55. I believe it was 55, the last one we had. All right, here's Hillary from her announcement on Saturday. And the first grandmother as well. And one additional advantage, you won't see my hair turn white in the White House. I've been coloring it for years. Strongest woman in the world, smartest woman in the world. Oh, because I'm a woman, I'm treated differently. And now all of a sudden, I, 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 I did a Gimme Five that's going to run later, and I said, hey, take the pantsuit off. Put on something that looks appropriate for the weather. You look, you had this long sleeve thing up to here, you're baking in the sun. And I felt free to do that because she's talking about how men age in the White House. She right, talked right, about, right. I'm not going to age. I'm dying my hair. I'm a grandmother. My mother told me this. She, her whole thing is gender. Right. A lot of a lot of appearance and gender talk, but let, let no one else address right, it. Right, right. By the way, I'm going to give her credit because I like to practice what I preach. That was a pretty good line. Uh, not delivered well because she doesn't the deliver. Hair, the second time <laughs> the, she's used I it, I like the hair yeah. one. Um, but, look, I think that this is a perfect example of how end of discussion is going to come into play in 2016. It's going to be gender, gender, gender. You're going to be sexist, sexist, sexist. Right. No matter what you say, I'm going to be sexist. Right. Uh, despite being a woman. But she can say it about herself. But she, she can yeah. go yeah. any direction she wants. All right. Frederica Whitfield on CNN talking about over the weekend we had some uh, a guy who lost his uh, custody of his kid, uh, mental problems supposedly, who wanted to blow up the police station in Dallas. He fired at them, blah, blah, blah. Here's how Frederica Whitfield described it, uh, 73. Police expressed that there might be four, and then they dialed it back to possibly one. But in your view, you still believe an operation like this has now spanned 18 miles. Uh, it was very courageous and brave, if not crazy as well to open fire on the police headquarters and now you have this scene this standoff courageous and brave and here was her quote unquote apology and yesterday during a segment on the Dallas Police Department attack I used the words courageous and brave when discussing the gunman I misspoke and in no way believe the gunman was courageous nor brave and I'll be right back. I mean, if you want to say you're sorry, right. say you're sorry. Well, but you said courageous and brave. What do you mean you didn't mean courageous and brave? And this is something we talk about in the book and in the discussion is about apologies. When you do something wrong, go ahead and apologize and do it fully and completely because that's the way to handle that. And I think that might have been the way to handle that there. When you haven't done something wrong and the outrage is truly fake, don't cave to these people because often it's only two or three people who are mad at you. But what, um, what, what, this, when you heard her say courageous and brave, what did you think? I thought, what is she talking about? So that about? warranted an apology, right? <laughs> well, and she's a news person. This is another thing You're we right. talk about in the book. She's a public figure, and we take on some of that as public figures, this language, being careful with your language, right. is part of our job description, certainly as an anchor when you're delivering the news. And I think it's fair to say that Courageous and Brave might have deserved an apology. If the situation were reversed somehow, and it was a Fox News anchor yes. who said it about a, a conservative who did something, who shot an abortion clinic, yes. or a, a, they, they'd be gone, right? They would certainly be gone. And I argue in most of these cases, an apology is probably all you need. Like, you don't need to be fired. I don't like it going to that place, uh, but certainly an apology. And I think you're right. The double standard is there. It always is. And it's in, in the discussion. Bernie Sanders with his rape fantasies, that's another one. Right. I mean, any, and Rick Santorum said any Republican on Friday that came out by Monday, gone. Yeah, frequently, whatever someone says in a leftist mouth is fine. <laughs> right. On the right, Let's move on. End of discussion. That's all in here, folks. If this topic interests you, and it better, because it's our, our freedom and our most cherished right, one of them anyway. Uh, Mary Catherine Ham, end of discussion. And it's the end of our discussion. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for I coming. Really it. appreciate it. All right, folks, we're coming back. Don't go away.